And so we're really proud to offer information this weekend that's gonna hopefully help to set you up to go forward because we're probably gonna be dealing with this for a little while. And so I'm excited to sit with you, Andrew, and really talk about RWJ Barnabas Health, talk about your role, and really get an understanding from a healthcare perspective, but also from a financial and overall wellness perspective, how we can heal in this long COVID scenario. So first and foremost, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role with RWJ. Thank you so much. Um, good, is it still morning? Good afternoon, everyone. I am truly, truly excited to be here and honored. I just had a conversation this morning with Tamika. Uh, I asked her, who's the audience? And then she said, oh, it's a lot of church people. We have several people online. So I said, well, I better wear my Sunday suit. So I have to change my Sunday suit so I should be here. But thank you so much. A little bit about myself, as I you know, I was introduced. I'm the Vice President of Health Equity. What does that actually mean? I always say my responsibility is to make sure that everyone, and I mean every single patient that comes to any of our hospital is treated with dignity and respect and gets the excellent care that everyone else is getting. What does that mean again? What do we mean by excellent care? There is particular definition, especially at the RWJBH, about excellent care. Is it a safe care? Is it an effective care? Is it efficient? Is it patient-centered? Is it timely? And is it equitable? So six things that we measure to make sure that it's an excellent care. Because sometimes we can say it's a safe care, but is it actually safe? Is it efficient, right? Um, so those are the things that we look at. So, and is to make sure that every single patient, when we say every single patient, irrespective of your color, your race, your creed, your sexual orientation, anything, as long as you come into our system, with any encounter, you get these six criteria for what we call excellent care. I love that. Anybody have uh, their own health experiences that, that may or may not have been equitable? I won't do a commercial, but I'll say just go to RWJ Barnabas Health and you'll make sure you get equitable care. So our theme, as I was saying, is financial healing, wisdom, wellness, and wealth. Can you speak a little bit about how, what that means to you personally and how it shows up in your role at RWJBH? Well, that's an excellent question. So um, to answer this, that question, I'll take a word that I think will be a common denominator for that. That will be stress. Let's think about that. Stress. How will we define stress? Because really when we talk about even financial healing, when you're in financial problems, financial issue, the problem, it manifests itself as a stress, right? We're stressed by that. Um, when we want to heal or when we want to even health itself, it's actually avoidance of stress. Stress can lead to physical problems. It can lead to high blood pressure. It can lead to psychological or mental problems, depression, anxiety, and the like. So avoidance of stress in any way could be the right thing to do. Now, you know, I'm talking about stress. We can go, I think we all understand what stress is. It's very, very easy to define. But um, the one thing I think, the one thing will be a takeaway because this program is quite an excellent program. We know that, right? We'll teach you how to get rid of debt, how to control your life financially. Um, in the meantime that you're doing that, we have also have to teach you how to manage the stresses that come with the debt with the financial problems, with even the health problems. So I think uh, your takeout will be, you know, simple, common things. How do you get rid of stress? How do you manage stress? Diet, you eat, you know, properly. As simple as that. Regular exercise, sleep well. Those are the three main simple things. So you have a lot of other things that I might have an opportunity to talk about later. But if you just remember that regular exercise and it's not running a marathon. It's not. It's really not at all. It's coming from your, it's going to the grocery store and parking at the end and walking to the grocery store. Walking to your mailbox and coming back home. Things like that. Instead of just sitting at home or just sitting and not doing anything, those little activities that you can do, activities of daily living, will be very helpful. Regular diet, regular eating. It's not about losing weight. 
It's not about anything like that, but just proper diet. And then sleep, which we take for granted, right? When you actually sleep well, it actually controls the stresses. I love that. I love that. One of the things we did not share in uh, both Dr. Sori's introduction and our coverage of RWJBH as a title sponsor of our conference is that Robert RWJ Barnabas Health is actually the first and the only current corporate employer that offers D free to all of its employees for free. For free. Can you speak a little bit to why this was such an important step for the organization to take? So the organization itself has been through a journey to actually become an anchor institution. It means that wherever we are located, we want to be our employer of choice. We want to be somewhere that people want to go to, somewhere that people identify with. And in being an anchor institution, you have your customers who are the patients. You also have your customers who are the employees. So we've been trying to not just provide this safe, effective, efficient, all that kind of care for patients, but what can we do for our employees? A couple of years ago, we raised our minimum wage to $15 an hour. Every employee, irrespective of your job, where you start, starts with $15 an hour. Really great. But it's interesting that just in the United States, even just raising to $15 an hour affects people in other ways because some of them lost their benefits because they're making that much. That didn't even make sense to me. I'm like, oh, we're paying you some more money, but you don't want the money because now you don't have your benefits. So those are things that we're looking at. And we also realize that most people who, it's not even most people that make the low hand end of the salary scale, but even most people, even the ones that are really making at the high end, if you do not control your finances well, that money does not really matter how much money you make. So the invitation and really the, the benefits of partner with D3 was, it was a no brainer. It was really easy because we saw that our employees needed it, irrespective of the amount of money that they make. But even when you're actually providing money, $15 an hour, if you don't teach people how to use the $15 an hour, how to get out of that, how to get rid of the burden that comes and the stress that comes with um, how we spend our money, I think it's not going to help. So in helping our community, our employees, and the organization itself, D3 actually, it was, it was actually a no-brainer. It was an easy thing to partner with. Excellent. And I thank the Robert Wood Johnson team, the RWJ team, for really being on our side. We've customized our marketing. We've tailored our messaging to make sure that it fits with what the, uh, the environment calls for. And so to those of you that were in training this morning, you know we always talk about D3 being custom-fitted. It truly is. So if you have an employer that may be interested in hosting D3, we're open to having that conversation as well. So next I'll say this, and you've spoken to this earlier, health is more than just physical wellness. Can you talk about RWJBH's approach to addressing the social determinants of health? Oh, absolutely. And um, so I'm sure everybody here, or probably most people have heard of social determinants of health. These are actually just circumstances in the environment where somebody's born, where they go to school, where they worship, where they live, where they age, and everything else that affects your health. For a very long time, really, really long time in the medical community, we did not pay attention to those things. We did not pay attention to your lack of transportation. We did not pay attention to the kind of school you went to. But now it's been actually studied, and now we know that about 80% of the things that affect your health, it's not just the physical things, are those environmental things, right? If you live in a community where um, when I call 911, it takes two minutes to get there when I'm having a heart attack, and you live in another community where when I call 911, it takes six minutes to get there, it makes a difference. We don't see that, but it translates into the life expectancy where you'll see the life expectancy for Caucasian is four years higher than life expectancy for African Americans. It's those little environmental things. But even gets even gets uh, to the other side, where even when you're in the same socioeconomic class, 
I can be in the same neighborhood, but because my race is different, when my wife is pregnant and goes to the same hospital, the outcome is different. Why is that? Simply because maybe there are other structural racism in the hospital, some other unconscious biases. Those are all things that we have to look at to make the change. So it's very complex, but we cannot continue to do business as usual. We have to address those social determinants of health. Otherwise, we are not going to move the needle at all. I love that. Have you ever heard a doctor talk about this? For someone from a healthcare system fully acknowledge that there are things that affect our health that aren't necessarily directly connected to our physical bodies. So again, we're talking about progressive, progressive service. So again, as we wrap, I really do want to talk about, and this is, you know, from a, a health and wellness perspective, what advice would you offer to our community as we enter or live through this long COVID era? And it could be from healthcare, it could be wellness, it could be financial, but any pieces of advice you have to offer our community? Yes. So health is wealth. Simple sentence, right? Health is wealth. And, um, you know, as I said, I said, tell the discussion. I, I, I actually stressed on managing stress. That is something that we can do individually. That is something we can teach from, you know, D3, from, from our perspective, from the hospital perspective. Because once you can manage that, that can help significantly. That managing your stress can help significantly. And it's starting very, very, very slowly. So if you look at anything that you do, you know, other, other things of, you know, themes in managing stress will be not doing things in excess, anything, right? Just not doing anything in excess. If you drink, don't do it in excess, right? If you're late, don't be late in excess. If you eat too much, don't eat in excess. Anything like that will be very, very helpful. You know, same thing I'll stress again, diet, you know, eating the right meal. And it's not about weight loss, but just eating the right healthy meal as much as possible. But even with that, right, if you are in an environment where it's a food desert, that is a problem. So those are all things we, as an anchor institution, we have the influence. We have the monetary influence to influence um, the shop right to bring their, you know, their supermarket in neighborhoods that do not have supermarkets. And unfortunately, these are neighborhoods where our brown and black people live. That's the unfortunate truth. So if we, as an organization, which we're looking at, handle those things, I think we can absolutely move the needle. And I'm excited to say that we're looking at that. The fact that we can have a vice president of health equity, right? The fact that we can partner with, you know, DeFree. The fact that we are partnering with different organizations before where, you know, we discharge patients and have, oh, you make an appointment for your doctor is on you. You finding transportation to go to your doctor is on you. Now the burden is becoming, is moving towards us. Now we are saying that we are responsible for that. So the one take home is for you all to understand that post COVID, every single organization, and I cannot just say it in post-COVID, post the Floyd trial, post-COVID, every single organization has been doing two things. One, understand that it's more than physical. It's a lot of this environmental issue. And two, are making moves to address how to deal with that. So you having that knowledge, right? You just having that knowledge, you just being comfortable to ask, hey, um, you're asking me to see my doctor in two weeks, but I don't have a primary care doctor. How can you help me with that? Makes a difference. Because if you do not know that that can be provided, you're not going to be able to ask, right? So you having that knowledge that every single organization right now in the United States is doing something on health equity, is doing something to avoid health disparity, and is addressing social determinants of health. Once you know that, that's the power that you have. Wow. Ask the question. Ask the question. 
Well, Mr. Thomas, I want to thank you so much for your time today and thank RWJ Barnabas Health for your continuous support. We really appreciate your partnership. You share great information with us today. So hopefully this kicks off our conference with your health as well. So let's be well so that we can continue to be wealthy. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank Take you care. very much.